afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, we spend so much time together each and every day during the course of a hockey season. So it's nice to be able to gather everybody here today on some real good news and uh, see each other again during the summer months. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping uh, notes before we get into the formal part of our program here. Uh, we are being carried live on several media platforms, so when we, when we do get into the Q&A, please speak, speak loud and clear as we have the in-house mics that will pick up the questions as well as the answers so that our at-home viewing and listening audience can be as, as engaged as possible. I have some special guests that I'd like to introduce before I introduce uh, the uh, dais. Uh, we have Ryan's family joining us today, his wife Denise Huska, thank you for joining us, and Charler and Hannah. Olivia and Luke, so thanks for taking the time to come down here today. It's a big day for Ryan, but it's also a big day for the family, which is so important. And I see in the back of the room some of our esteemed alumni. I see Mike Commodore, Mike, Matt Stajan, and Curtis Glencross. Thanks, fellas, for taking some time to be here for an important announcement. So without further ado, without further delay, I'll turn the uh, room over to the general manager of the Calgary Flames, Craig Conroy. Well, first, I want to say thanks to everybody for being here again. It's only been a little bit more than a couple weeks, but, you know, I knew when I was sitting here a couple weeks ago, I already had the list. The first major thing I was going to have to do was find a head coach, and I knew it wasn't going to be easy. You know, there's lots of great candidates out there from experienced coaches down to college coaches and, and, and kind of everything in between. So, you know, the list was pretty long to start, and as we kind of going through – the last few weeks, we narrowed it down to start who we're going to talk to, how we're going to go through the interview process. And I think that was the biggest thing right there because what am I really looking for? Who fits that kind of mold? And then, you know, going through it with ownership, uh, John Bean, Don Maloney, and then the management group to kind of work through that process was really uh you know, more time consuming and a little bit harder than I actually thought. I mean, I've been on the other side when Brad has done this and, you know, you think it's going to be a, an easy, quick process, but once you really dig in, it, it's more to it than that. So, you know, but we wanted to make sure we went through, did all of our work behind the scenes to, to get the right person. And, you know, I think the last time I was here, I mentioned the importance of what I was looking for in a coach. You know, I wanted a good communicator, a leader, someone that can inspire this group, play sound defensive hockey with structure. And then on the offensive side, I wanted, I wanted our guys to be creative and kind of take it to the next level offensively because they're so skilled nowadays, all the guys, you, you want to let them have that kind of free reign and, and go about doing what they do best. And hopefully that's scoring lots of goals. Uh, so as we kind of narrowed the search down, it became more and more clear to me that Ryan and I had the same vision. We, uh, without me having to say anything, when he did his PowerPoint and went through the video and, and I thought, hmm, this is, you know, I know we're both been here a long time and we've seen the team. We know what we think the team needs, but to actually have not talked to him about it and have him say it, I thought he kind of touched every point that I was hoping to look for in a new coach. You know, with that said, we were interviewing other people and, and they did a very good job also. But I just felt like at the end of the day, Ryan was the right person for that job. You know, and I think part of it was over the course of our nine years together, I got to see him as a head coach. Not many of you in the room have seen him as a head coach, but to watch him, the way he worked, the way he went about his business day in and day out to kind of, in the American League, and to see growth in Rasmus Anderson, Shillington, Mangiapani, I mean, numerous other guys that he put in the NHL, it's hard because you want people, everybody wants to win as a coach, but when it's American League, we're trying to develop players for the NHL. And I know at times Ryan probably wanted to play some different guys in different key situations, but he did what the mandate was, which was to get those guys better, ready for the NHL. And now you look, you know, he's got numerous people that have been playing in the NHL under his, his guidance. So that was a big part of it. And then when he came up to work in the NHL, you know, I thought he's a forward. And he's playing, I questioned whether he could run the D, do the PK, and that was a big thing for me. I'm like, I think we need a defenseman to do that. And, uh, you know, he again, he proved me wrong. You know, our PK, the structure, to see him work with, I talked to Al McNeil all the time because he was a defenseman. He said, this is what he does well, look, look at what he's doing, all these little details that maybe I didn't realize. But 
over the course of time, I thought, you know what? I think this he's going to be a head coach in the NHL. I don't know if it was going to be here over these last nine years, but he's going to be somewhere. So that was another thing that kind of got me excited uh, about when I kind of looked around and just said, what am I looking for? Who would be the best fit? It really became uh, clear the last four or five days that, you know, Ryan was the guy. So I feel like he's the one that he's put his time in. He's done everything he could. The only thing he hasn't gotten is a chance to be an NHL head coach, and now he is. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce the new head coach of the Calgary Flames, Ryan Huska. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, you could probably tell by the smile on my face at a few times how excited I am to be up here. Um, but first, I would like to uh, thank the ownership group of the Calgary Flames and Craig Conroy for this opportunity and honor to be the next head coach of, of the Calgary Flames. I'd also like to thank the entire management group um, for their support and their trust and, and belief in me and my coaching abilities. It's going to be a lot of fun working with, with Craig and that group of guys. Uh, and I am so proud to be the head coach of this team. And I know this role comes with a lot of responsibility to the organization, to our players in particular, and, and of course to our fans. And it's something that I'm going to work my absolute hardest to create an environment that's going to allow our players and our staff to succeed. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family, um, my wife Denise and my kids Hannah, Olivia and Luke. It's not the easiest being a husband or a uh, child of a hockey coach, um, but because of their love and support it's allowed me to, to kind of get where I am today. Two more people I guess I would say. My mom who's home in Kelowna, um, the best, she'd have a huge smile on her face and if my dad was here today he would be the most proud guy in the room. And I didn't know there was going to be some alumni here, so I'm going to go off my original plan for one quick story. Thank you guys in the back for being here. When I was eight years old, our team, minor hockey team in trail, won a contest to have breakfast with members of the Calgary Flames. And Colin Patterson and Joel Otto were the two guys that I got to at eight years old have breakfast with. Uh, and something I've never forgotten. And then you spin it forward. We had a dad's trip a few years back. Um, and Colin was on that trip telling jokes and, and you know, just really made me aware of how strong and powerful the alumni of this team is. And it's something that I've never forgotten from eight years old. And seeing these guys back here is, is a pretty cool thing. Um, my position coming into this is a little bit different. Not a lot of coaches get the opportunity to move up within the same organization like I am getting here today. Um, I was told at a young age, you have two eyes and two ears for a reason. Uh, and for my coaching career, I remembered that. And with my time here in Calgary, I've had the, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work with some very good coaches. All coaches have had different philosophies, different means of communication, different ways they look at the game. And because of that experience that I have had here within this organization, I am 100% confident that I'm ready for this challenge. The second thing for me is I know these players. Um, and I look at that as a positive thing. There is a, a lot of good people in our dressing room and there's excellent hockey players that want to win uh, and they will do anything they can to succeed. I, I am a big believer in that group of people and their ability. And my job now as the head coach is to make sure I push them every day um, to get the best version of them and also to try to push them to another level, both as individuals and as a team. Um, so that's something that's important for me. And I'm going to do that by making sure I keep working on my relationships with them. I know them, but that can always be strengthened. Um, and they have to know what's expected of them. And that's something that I'm going to do a, a good job of um, with them so they have an idea of what we're, what we're looking to accomplish with them. And then it's my job to put them in positions to succeed and excel. And that's something I'm really looking forward to in working with our, our players moving forward. Um, I am a believer in consistency and I'm a believer in process. This team is going to play hard for each other. Um, this team is going to do things the right way, the Flames way. 
And when I think of the Flames way, it's a very hard working team. It's one that competes consistently and plays a smart brand of hockey. Um, we're going to talk a lot about um, thinking the game faster and, and playing quick with our transition and the importance of making sure we understand the value of the puck. And we're going to spend a lot of time working with our players on that. Uh, I, I wish we were going tomorrow. I am excited. This is going to be uh, a great thing for our group. Um, and again, I'd, I'd just like to finish by thanking you all for coming. Um, this is an honour for myself and my family, and I am really excited about getting this going. And as I said, I wish we were doing that later today or tomorrow, having the opportunity to hit the ice. But thank you again. OK, we'll get right into questions. We'll start with Eric Francis, please. Uh, congratulations, Ryan. Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, a question for both of you. First of all, can you describe, you alluded to it a little bit, but the culture that you want to build here? What, you know, what are the key words, key things? You know, the big thing for me, when you create an environment, you have to, you have to create something where the players, they want to be, uh, number one, and they, they have to be pushed on a daily basis and then eventually it's them taking over. So y you want them to have fun around the rink, that's important, but they also have to come um, with a focus to get better each and every day. So w when we talk about creating the right environment around the rink, fun's talked about a lot. It it's not fun like um, you're going to an amusement park or that type of fun, if you know what I mean. There needs to be a focus to what they're doing because we have to have the mindset to get better every day. But you want to create something where the players are there to enjoy each other and to make sure they're going to push each other to get better. And then the second question is for Craig. How important was continuity in this whole process? Because last year there were so many growing pains and that set you guys back. Well, I mean, I think it's important. Obviously, you want to kind of go through the right way. And, we, yeah, we had – different players coming in, trying to get acclimated to the city, to the team, to everything. So to kind of be able to have that is a bonus. You know, I wouldn't have though, if I felt like it was a, there was a person out there that was better suited to coach this team and he wasn't in, you know, from this organization, I would have done it. I mean, that was the thing when, with the ownership and, and uh, John Bean, they said, you, you can pick any coach you want, Craig, like just, make sure you get the right one so it wasn't they weren't holding me back on anything and I went through the process and you know fortunately to find the right person in internal it just makes it that much smoother transition for the guys with a Julian followed by Ryan Leslie Hi, Ryan. Hi, thank you um, in terms of your front office staff is there any news on who else will be joining you behind the bench and specifically when it comes to the offense we know Craig has talked a lot about wanting to see the offensive players kind of get a little bit more creative yeah. how do you envision that working out and, and, and how do you envision uh, in terms of having a coach beside you who's in charge of that who do you envision seeing uh, in that position well that, that's priority for me now is to is to get a group of guys together so that's my number one task and, and we want to um, make sure we find the, the best people or person for that job, um, whether it's an internal candidate or whether it's someone from the outside. So uh, ideally you bring people in um, that provide balance to myself and the rest of the staff. So you want different experiences, you want people that have been around different people, different ideas, and that's something that's important. And you also want a group of people or coaches um, that you can be comfortable with around each and every day. That's so important because we spend so much time together, but we do have a list that's being built and that's going to be priority now for me to get working on that. <coughs> um, Thanks. As you transition into this new role, what for you is the biggest challenge to go uh, from your previous role into the new head coach role? What's your biggest challenge that you see? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question and I, I was kind of expecting that one. Um, you know, I, I think for certain people, it, it's maybe easier for them to make, hey, this guy's going from being a 1,400 game guy in the NHL to a head coach. For me, that's not the path that I was ever on. I wasn't a good enough player to actually have a, a, a decent NHL career. And I, I recognize that, realize that, but I wanted to be in the NHL. So I knew in order for me to get there, I would have to take a lot of steps along the way. And part of those steps is earning trust. Um, and you do that in each and every step. And I feel like I did that with our guys here as, as uh, and a, a head coach in the American League. I feel like I earned trust in a different way when I came up here as an assistant. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as a head coach now where I'm going to earn their trust. But the big thing for me is consistency in how I approach individuals and the team and preparation to make sure they know that I'm prepared, um, to allow them to be prepared, 
and then there is no more issue, period. Would Danny also followed by Brendan? And this builds on Eric's first question just a little bit, but we did hear when the team made the decision to move on from Daryl that there was quite a bit of unhappiness in end-of-season meetings from the players about how things were run. So is that as simple as saying it's a fresh start, or what is the process of sort of rebuilding well, with them? Good question. I mean, there's always unhappiness when you don't win, and we'll we'll say that no matter what the situation is. But that's the one beauty of all this is the players that had good years last year, the players that, to their own, um, you know, probably their own minds, didn't have years they wanted to. It is a fresh start, and and that is is something that's cool because there's a different energy around the rink. Um, there's a different level of optimism, and when you have that, and you have you know good relationships, people coming in, um, there's an excitement and there's a buzz, and that's what you want because you want a group of guys that are are coming back fired up and ready to go. And then from there, um, we're going to work with them every day on making sure we're going to connect them as a team. Go ahead, Brendan. Gratzask, uh, just I thought you kind of mentioned this, the path to where you are now and mm -hmm. kind of unique in some ways going through the AHL and assistant coach all within the same organization. How yeah. do you, you know, working with a lot of different players, different different coaches and styles, how do you feel that, you know, maybe that's prepared you for this this opportunity now all within the same organization? Well, you along the way, you're always taking information. And as I mentioned, with some of the people that I've had a chance to work with and for, um, it's almost like you're you're creating your own little book of yes I love this this is an unreal idea this maybe I could tweak a little bit this I wouldn't use um, and then you start maybe building your your profile as to how you would like to see a team play so you don't get that opportunity if you're not put in these situations so I I look at it as this is the way I was supposed to go I had to I had to get myself to a point where I know the players I know the league. Uh, I know the demands that are placed on them. I know the demands that are placed on the staff uh, to allow me to be comfortable and confident in this position, which I fully am now. And if I go back like five years, everybody wants to be the head coach. Um, but if you're not ready for it, it's, it can be an awful uh, tough time, um, you know, having success. So I feel fortunate that I've done it the way that I have. It's put me in a good position to make sure that I'm comfortable and confident in knowing that I'm ready for everything that's coming. Go to Logan Gordon, then we'll come to this side of the room with Salam Balch. Congrats, Ryan. My Thank question's uh, for Craig. Craig, over your term as assistant GM, the head coaching position hasn't been one that's you know, transitioned for a long period of time. How important is it for this hire to be a, a long-term one when it comes to Ryan as the head coach of the team? Well, I just watch different organizations and different where they've had success. And the one thing they've always seemed to have is continuity in the head coach. They're not changing the head coach a lot. They stick with a guy. And that's what I said before. I hope we're together the next 10 to 20 years. I mean, that would be uh, ideal. But I do think that means something. And I think when Brian Burke first came on, he told me something. You know what? You have to support the coach, Craig. And you have to make sure the players know that the coach is the boss. He's the boss. He's going to control who's on the ice, ice times, what goes on. All of that. So, you know, I think that'll be one of the things when we have our first meeting at training camp. I want them to make sure, even though Ryan was, you know, the assistant coach, he is the head coach now. And he's going to run this team the way he wants. And, and I'm going to be supportive of it, you know, from above. And that's what they need to know. You know, it's just got to be, we're all in this together. And I do think, uh, you know, in the long run, to have someone here long term is going to be, uh, you know, that's my, that's my ultimate goal. For a long, long partnership. Go ahead, Saul. Uh, congrats, Ryan. Just the uh, one for Ryan, and then one for Craig. First of all, Ryan, Craig mentioned a lot about offensive creativity and letting your stars, your offensive players, do that. What do you look at in terms of modern day offense in the National Hockey League? How do you want your players to to approach that? Um, for me, I I look at it that you want them to have the freedom to make plays. That's why they're where they're at, and that's why they get paid the way they do. I mean, they have talent that not a lot of people do have, so you want to give them that freedom. And, and for me, the way I see this team playing, you get them to understand the importance of being quick with how you're getting to the other end so you can get that puck to the net as fast as you can. Then their skill set takes over. Um, you, you spend a lot of time with those guys, and I think if you, if, if you get them to the point that they understand what you're looking for out of them and they know that you're going to support them in – what they do well. Sometimes there's going to be mistakes on the ice, but if you earn their trust that you're going to go back to them in certain situations, they're going to they're going to play hard for you. And ultimately, that's what it is at the end of the day. And when you talk about our staff, 
um, we're going to look for people that can help in that area as well. That's going to be something that's important for us. Okay. And then for Craig, there's a lot of talk just about getting Jonathan Hubriel back to the version he was a season ago. Did you talk to, to any players or agents in, in this process that ultimately led to, to Ryan Tire? Probably Jonathan the most because, you know what, I mean, I talked to him right after I got the job. And last year was last year, and that's what I told him. I said, we need that swagger back. We need that confidence. And I thought towards the end of the year, he was making huge strides. The compete, he looked a little more pissed off in the game, and I liked that, you know, and he was taking more charge. And we need that. We need him to be a leader on this team. I think, you know, obviously making a big trade, coming here, the contract, everything like that, he put a lot of pressure on himself. So we're trying to take the pressure off him and just say, come have fun, play. you got to play your game. We're going to give you an opportunity. And, you know, one of his things was, I need to be on the ice, Craig. And I said, you're going to be on the ice. I mean, that's, that's what we do. I mean, when you have top players, you got to put them, like Ryan said, in positions to succeed. He can't do anything with two minutes ago sitting on the bench. He needs to be on the ice. He needs to be given that confidence. And I think once you do, he cares. I mean, that's the one thing I know everyone – doesn't know him that well. It I could tell it bothered him every day. Sometimes he wouldn't we wouldn't talk and I could just tell where his mindset was at. But we need him to get back to having fun, coming to the rink, playing hard. And you know what? You're gonna make mistakes, but put him in a position to succeed and have success. And that's you know, but I have talked to a lot of players. You know, I did want to make sure that they felt comfortable with way, the kind of the way I was in my mind I was going. Ryan Pike, followed by Derek Wills, please. Congrats, Ryan. Um, I have one for Craig, one for Ryan. Uh, Craig, uh, obviously you talked to a bunch of people. Are you able to sort of walk us through sort of how big the long list was and how it got whittled down to the, the final group? Well, I think the list was pretty – I mean, if I, it was a long list, and I bet you I got down to 15 uh, – around 15 names that I wanted to talk to, whether they were Zoom, in person. You know, the one thing was it was a priority for me to do this, so I didn't even end up going to the Combine last week, which, you know, I, I, that's one of my favorite things to do. But this was the priority, so to kind of be able to work through that, you know, we had the first initial group, we cut it down to four, and then we really uh, – all those four came in and we really grinded. It was, it was a lot of work. And, you know, like I said, each of them did a really good job. And I just felt like coming out of it, I felt good about Ryan being the number one guy for me. And uh, Ryan, for, for you, uh, you know, how did you find out you got the job? What was that conversation like? Um, it was a great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell you, though, the, after you go through your second interview, um, you're always hoping that you're going to hear something sooner than later, whether it's a yay or a nay. And it was quiet for a day. And I'm like, hey, there are still lots probably going on. It was quiet for another day. So then I found myself on the third day power washing my stones in the backyard for like six hours. Like, what is going on back here? I don't have a weed in my yard right now. Because um, then your mind starts to go on. And it was, again, a, you know, it's something for a different time. But... Um, and then I, I talked to Craig, or he texted me that night if we could meet in the, if I can in the morning. Interrupt. Yeah. We actually went to see Charlie Kabelka sing. <laughs> so Ryan and I were there, and there was, there was a lot of people around, so I didn't say anything, which was probably a little awkward. I could feel the tension, to be honest. It was a lot of tension. And then when the concert was, you know, like when she was done singing and we were there for a while longer, when I went home, I texted him, could you meet me at the Dome tomorrow yeah. at 9? And he quickly got back to me saying, yeah, but it was, it was a weird little, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you I, thought. I felt weird. I jumped in the car afterwards. I'm like, that's it. We're done. <laughs> uh, so I loved getting the text later that night. And it was, I was probably the first guy in here in the morning for sure. Yeah. Hey, Derek, followed by George. Congratulations, Ryan. Thanks, Derek. Uh, I know it's early in the process, but are you thinking about making any significant changes to the system or the style the team plays moving forward? You know, we did a lot of things um, well last year, and when you look analytically, a lot of the categories that we follow or, or we um, put importance on, we were, we were up there. Um, there are certain categories or certain areas that we have to do a better job of, and one of them is the types of chances against that we would give up. So there's going to be tweaks to how um, we defend. Um, that's one thing that we're going to look at doing. And then when I mentioned managing the puck, we'll put priority on making sure we're putting each other in a, in a good position. And I think by making some of those subtle changes to what we want to do, um, it's going to make the chances that we give up 
um, maybe lesser quality and it make the shots that our goaltenders are going to see a little bit more predictable is what our goal and our mindset is right now. Just as a follow-up to that, uh, it can be a copycat league at times. Yep. Do you watch the playoffs and do you take anything from what you see from the Golden Knights or the Panthers or other teams? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's it's even through the regular season, but the teams that are playing at the end, um, you do have a focal point or a focus on them to see, are they doing something different? Is there something that we can pull into what we're doing? That's That's all part of it. And uh, I go back to finding the right staff because a lot of times um, the people that you work with or have a, a chance to be around, they see games that they're watching differently and then that's when the communication starts as to how we can incorporate maybe something that we've seen into what we want to do. We'll take a few more in this format. We'll go to Logan Gordon actually followed by Danny Austin. Uh, Ryan, one of the things that Craig's talked about in this process was giving young players a bigger opportunity in this organization. Imagine that's something that vibes well with you, given your time with the American Hockey League team and the youngsters that you know in this organization already. Yeah, everybody gets a chance. I, I mean, we have some young guys that came in at the end of the year, and they bring a different type of energy, a different dynamic to the team, and that's something that I feel that we need. Um, when you're a, a guy that's trying to break his way into the lineup um, on a consistent basis, they bring a different energy level, and that's not just on the ice, that's in the room. And sometimes I find that to be infectious. So you want to see that competition. So as Craig mentioned in his press conference, um, those guys are going to be given a chance. Um, and then it's a matter of what they do with that chance, which is the same for me. It's the same for Craig. We're giving an opportunity here, and now it's up to, up to us, and it's up to them to take advantage of that opportunity. I apologize, I skipped George. We'll just go That's okay. That's all right. Uh, Ryan, congratulations. Thank you, George. Um, my question's uh, for Craig. Craig, um, we know that you have a busy summer ahead of you mm -hmm. with seven guys heading into the season with an expiring contract. Did you get a chance to speak to Elias Lindholm about hiring Ryan and whether or not that would be a factor in his decision to sign long-term in Calgary? Well, Elias... That's definitely was a factor. I mean, he wants to know who the coach was going to be, what type of coach, you know, how he sees the team being built forward. And it's still a work in progress. You know, I'm trying to get a – now that we have Ryan, I know we reached out to him. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you've talked to him yet. This morning. This morning? Okay, good. So I'm going to be back in touch. I mean, Elias is a big – you know, like I said, he's a priority for us, and we're going to – get back to him and hopefully uh, see how that moves forward. But now that the coach is done, I can kind of start focusing on these other things. Obviously, the draft's coming. Our pro meetings are going on again right now, <laughs> so for the next few days. But, yeah, I mean, Elias is a, a key guy, and I, I'll try to get a hold of him at some point today too. Back to Danny, please. Yeah, Ryan, just to follow yeah. that up, I mean, what's your pitch when you talk to a guy like Elias? Well, it's, it's not just Elias. It's the whole the whole group of guys. So I'm, I'm going to work through and, and talk to all of them because they are – as I mentioned earlier, they're excellent players. And I feel like they all bring something to the team. So in a perfect world, um, you get them all back again. Um, because I do like what these guys bring to the table. So there's a lot of good players, and we want to make sure we get them in all back if we can and make sure we put them in positions to be successful. Because when, when they're at their very best, our team's going to be a good team. So we've heard like from, from pretty much everyone in the organization that it the team underperformed last year. What is your expectation? I know there's a lot of change, but playoff yeah. team, I mean, what's, what, what's the I think your goal always is to be a playoff team. You just have to find a way to get yourself there. And then there's different things that you would you would talk with your team about in regards to how we're going to get there as you get them here and you move forward. But um, the hardest part is getting there. And maybe the three things that I've learned over the last number of years here is one is how hard it is to win. Um, 82 games, It's it's hard to win. Um, two is making sure you, you create and work in the right environment. And, and three, the importance of leadership. Um, you need to have it from top of the organization r right through the, if you want to call it the lowest rung, it needs to be there. It's, it's that important. Okay, we'll take final three. We'll go Julian, Matt, and we'll finish with Moses, please. Sorry, Ryan. Yeah. I guess to follow back up on my uh, assistant coach question, how important is it to, you had mentioned having experience as an asset for a coach about with you, but. How important is it to have continuity in terms of some of those coaches you would have with you? Continuity in regards to do I have a relationship with them? That, that or guys who have been around the team already? Oh, um, we're, as I mentioned before, we're looking at internal, external, all candidates. And I have a lot of trust and belief in the guys that we have here. Um, but as Connie said, we want to make sure we get the best people that will help us um, put the best team on the ice. So that's what we're looking for. We're creating a really good list of people, and then we'll work on narrowing it down. Go ahead, Matt. 
Uh, congrats, Ryan. Uh, Thank you. Will it be your responsibility to choose the next captain, and what does that process kind of look like? Um, it'll be both of us working together on that. And then you you have conversations, you have ideas as as to who you might think in that would fit that role, um, who you would work well with in that situation, and ultimately um, Craig and I would spend a lot of time because it's, it's an important role. Um, the players need to be able to trust that player, that they're going to come to us w with uh, their best interest, um, and vice versa. We have to trust that our message that goes to that person is going to be brought forward to the team the right way. So it's a, it's a really important role, and one that I don't think either side should take lightly, but it is an important role and one that I do think we need. Go ahead, Moses. Uh, just two questions for uh, either one of you. First of all, uh, congratulations, Ryan. Thank on you. The gig. And my question for you is just in regards to who is that person that has inspired you the most and that's helped you along your journey as a coach through the WHL, AHL, and now with the Calgary Flames? That's uh, a really good question, and I don't know if it's, if it's a fair one for me to answer because I have a lot. Um, right from my time in junior hockey as a player, um, the guys that I, I learned how to play the game from are really important to me. Um, the guys that I started to work with as I moved my way on are all important to me and people that I continue to use today. Uh, I've, you never want to see coaches get lo let go, um, but the way the situation worked here, it's given me an opportunity to work with a lot of different people that have impacted me in a lot of different ways. and, and for that, I'm, I'm forever grateful because I feel like it's made me a way better coach having an opportunity to work with all these different people. So if I rattle off a couple names, I know I'm going to miss some, and I don't want to do that here today. There's just there's a lot of people that have um, helped me get to this point, and um, you know, I'll reach out to those people for sure uh, and thank them for their help, but I don't want to miss one right now. And for you, Craig, just in regards to that whole process and the talks with Ryan, you mentioned something about a PowerPoint. Are we talking about like very detailed or like how detailed are we talking about here? Extremely detailed. <laughs> like took a long, <laughs> yeah, it was a long, you know, he had it right from the beginning, kind of what he thought the weaknesses were, how we were going to play, different things he would change, uh, video as far as defensive zone, offensive zone, set break. I mean, it was, a, it was quite a detailed process. I don't know how long it took him. He did a great job putting it together, and it was very – the one thing he's always, you know, even when you talk to the guys, his meetings are on point. What he's trying to get across to them is easy to follow. You know, they never said, you know, once he explains it once, they're like, okay, we know exactly what he wants. He's articulate, he's well-spoken, and he's very attention to detail is second to none. So, and that's what it was in that whole presentation. You know, it, it flowed. He never gets off topic like I do sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, this is impressive, you know. So to go through it and to see what he wanted to do and just to see, like he said, a couple tweaks on the defensive side. I did have a hard time every now and then. I'm like, oh, there's a guy wide open in front of, you know, how did we have the breakdown? Where is it? And just the way he wants to kind of just subtly change that would make a huge difference in my mind. So I thought, oh, that's a great point. I didn't think about it. And then he showed me videos of teams that did that in the NHL already. And it's not going to be that big a change, but I think it's going to make a big difference. Final question is Salam Balji. Hey, just for Craig, uh, Mitch Love was sort of the other kind of big name internal candidate here. Do, do you envision him potentially being a part of the new staff, or do you, do you think he'll, he'll end up back in the American League as a coach? Or? He's, he's going to be interviewed for sure, and Mitch did it. You know, the one thing I can say, Mitch has done an unbelievable job, uh, two-time coach of the year in the American League. So he was right in that Final Four, I'll be honest. He was in the Final Four, and he's confident, and he knows he can do it, and he's ready. I said – I. Even I told Mitch, and uh, you know, I'll be honest today that I think he needs a little time in the NHL because, you know, even as a player, when I went from the American League to the NHL, and then there is a step and there's a learning curve, and to just get thrust into that without kind of going through that, it's not fair to him. You know, I know he believes 100% he could do it, and not saying he couldn't, but for me, being a first-time, you know, GM in the league. To have someone that's kind of went through the steps the way I kind of envisioned it in my mind um, was probably the difference in making the hire, you know, and I felt like Ryan was 100% the guy for me.
All right, we'll conclude there. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be around for a little bit. Well, I know we have some one-on-ones already pre-booked, but uh, please see myself or Sean Kelso. Yeah. 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 Yeah.